Good evening, everybody. A couple episodes ago, I showed you guys how to build a Street Fighter 2 AI uh, using stable baselines, OpenAI. Uh, the one that I trained, I used the A2C um, algorithm, and it was able to beat Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition on the Genesis on one less than medium, which I thought was pretty good. I was pretty proud of that. Uh, there's a bunch of questions in the comments. Uh, the coolest of those questions, somebody wanted to fight the AI. And uh, <laughs> I think that's awesome. So I'm going to show you guys in the next couple of videos how to write up some code uh, to fight an AI. Or possibly have two, A's fight, two AIs fight each other. Uh, we're going to use Pi Game, because I think it's awesome. Open AI. Retro and stable baselines. Okay, let's get going. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have some stuff installed. Okay, uh, I am in my tutorials virtual environment. If you need to know how to set up a virtual environment, go watch one of my older videos. I set it up a bunch of times. Uh, in particular, if you watch the either the F zero, I believe the F zero uh, bot tutorial it'll show you how to set it up for stable baselines and that's what you need so this is all the stuff i've got installed it's a million things but the things we need for this particular uh tutorial is pygame and we've got 1.9.5 installed we also need tensorflow gpu we've got 1.1.0 1.10 installed we need uh, stable baselines. Oops, that's not how you spell that. We have 2.4.1. And what else do we need? Jim Retro. I have a compiled version, just because that's the way I did it. But uh, what you're going to want is get 0 .1, 0 0.7.0. I think the new one's pretty good. I can't remember. So that's stable baselines. This is... Jim Retro, and then we actually also need this one, Retro Wrapper. So if you don't have that, install, pip install, Retro Wrapper, okay? You need that also. Uh, once you got on all that, we're going to make a directory. That's already, <laughs> I've already made it apparently. And we're going to CD into it and uh, let's make a new file. We'll call it play.py, okay? And I think we can open that right here. Tutorials, SF2, play.py. Okay, so this is going to be the file we're going to work in. Uh, we don't need this. Get out of here. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to import Pi game. You, if you haven't installed it, you have to install it. If you don't know how to install it, you do pip install Pi game. Okay? Uh, that's how you do it within your virtual environment. If you don't understand virtual environments, you got to watch an earlier video. Sorry, I'm not going through it in this in this episode. So we've in, let's make this bigger. We've imported Pi Game. Uh, Pi Game is it's like for making uh, well, it's for making games in Python. It's pretty flexible, to be honest. It's pretty pretty great. I uh, I don't know. I, I only just started using it. It's pretty good. So Pi Game init. Uh, actually, I believe that starts a Python Pi Game play. Yeah. Hello from the Pi Game community. That's what they. That's how that works. That's pretty nice, right? Nice guys. <laughs> Gotta make this pretty for the thumbnail. <laughs> there we go. Um, so yeah, Pi Game init. Close the brackets. Uh, let's try that again. Yeah. And then uh, you basically you create a window. Pi Game dot display dot set mode and set mode you can set the resolution uh, I'm gonna do 800 by 600 you can do whatever you want just remember what it is because you're gonna scale it up later when we do this it's gonna open a window boom close because there's nothing else to happen but that's the beginning of that okay so the first thing we should do is display an image just so I can show you what's going on here uh, we're going to go image equals pi game image dot load and then we can pick a well we need to we need to move a file let me just find an image okay let's 
So as you can see, I've put an image in here. It's called pizza, Adam pizza. Okay, so Adam pizza dot JPEG. Um, and then this is how you actually, if you use Pygame with sprites, you load images, you can load images like this in, and then you can do this. I don't actually looked up what this stands for, but basically this displays the image at these locations. So if you move, if it's a smaller than the full size image, that's how you can do that. Okay. Uh, let's see if that worked. Oh, <laughs> that was Adam. He, he showed up and disappeared. Um, let's, let's just put, we're going to, we're going to work in a while loop to do all of the, uh, cause you know how we do it in, in open AI, we do a while loop. So we might as well start doing that right now. We'll just do this. There's stupid Adam eating pizza by himself. <laughs> That's a good friend of mine. Okay. So, uh, now that we've shown that you can load images into Pi game and display them, uh, if you recall in OpenAI retro, the OBS variable that we often get from the env.step function is just an image. That's all it is. So we can render the, uh, environment like normally we use env.render, but it's a tiny little screen. Well, in this case, we can render the environment much larger. This has the added benefit of being able to read keyboard commands and joystick commands because Pygame has a whole library specifically set up to uh, use the keyboard as controls or like game pads as controls. So that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, we're going to we're going to create a uh, open AI environment and we're going to start setting up some controls. Okay, and that'll be it for this episode. Well, actually, first we're going to we're going to import the images and then we will We'll do the rest. Okay, so we actually want this. Well, we'll come back to this. So our screen's going to be 800 by 600. Uh, we need to import retro. Import retro. And uh, we are also going to set up our environment. Why not? Right. So if you've never if you've never set up OpenAI uh, retro before, you have to install it. And then you need to write a command called um, Python m retro.scripts or something like this. Uh, oop, I broke it. You need to import the games. Traditionally, you can do this using um, the, uh, I believe it's import retro.import maybe. Yeah, so retro.import and then wherever you have the ROMs. Technically, you need to legally own the ROMs. So make sure you legally own the ROMs before you do that. Uh, you can buy the Sonic the Hedgehog ROMs on uh, Steam, okay? All right, let's clear this up just a bit. So we're uh, creating an environment in OpenAI Retro. So to do that, we do retro.make, and then we need the game name. So, you know, traditionally we start with Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, actually, let's start with, we're gonna, we're gonna make a Street Fighter bot today, so let's do this one. I've previously set up Street Fighter Champion Ship, no, Champion Edition. I can't spell, this is, uh, so, all these states and everything, these are pre-made. You'll have to do them yourself. 2, 2P is uh, Ryu versus Guile, and it's two-player. We are, uh, we're going to leave it like that for now because the idea is that one of us will, one player will be the AI and one player will be me, okay? So let's leave it like that. Um, what's next? So we have, we have an environment. Now we can do um, OBS equals m.reset. m.reset basically resets the emulator to the beginning of the game. And OBS is the first variable that you can get out of it, which is the uh, image. So that will be a picture. And we're going to, well, let's, let's put all this crap together. We're going to pump that into our Pi game environment so that we can s basically create m.render ourselves. Okay? So we have OBS, and now we need uh, to import the image. 
So previously we loaded an image into Pygame, but now the image is already in uh, memory, so we're actually gonna do it from the buffer, okay? So that is from buffer. Uh, OBS is from env.reset there, we did that one. And now you do a two string. So you create a string out of the, it's a kind of strange, eh? I don't, I'm not entirely sure why it works like this, but you create one long string out of the image. Uh, and then we need the shape. And in this case, this is what we need. We want the uh, resolution and it's gonna be RGB, okay? Uh, now we can do win.blit image zero zero just like before, and pygame.display flip for some reason, that that's what it is, <laughs> okay? So, hey, win's not defined, right, because you have to define a window, guys, gotta do that. We already did that, and then I deleted it, because that's, that's my move. Remember that before we did 800 by 600? Okay, so there's the first image of the game. It's not moving because we need an env dot step. The other thing we've noticed is it's really tiny, so we want to scale it up. This is a good reason to use um, Pygame because scaling up the image is quick and very easy. There is a simple function for that. So we got image equals that. Now we'll do image equals Pygame dot transform transform dot scale the same image, and we're gonna scale it up to the same size as our window, okay? You can do it to any size you want, but uh, you gotta make sure your window will fit it. There's probably a way to do this full screen. Like I said, I'm new, so, you know, aha! So there you go. The image is full screen now, or much larger. It's much easier than open, using, like I used to use OpenCV and all that stuff. I don't think I'm gonna use that anymore. This is way better. Um, Okay, so the other thing we need to do is we need to uh, do env.step. Well, well, normally with env.step we do the image, OBS, which is our observation variable. Uh, we do the reward, the info, and the done. Okay, so OBS is the observation. It's actually the picture of the screen at that frame. Reward is if you've previously set up your uh, scenario file, You'll have specified the rewards, like you get one for moving to the right or one for beating the other character up or whatever, whatever the reward is. The info is all of the variables you're tracking at once, and the done variable is um, whether or not the uh, whether or not the condition that you've set for the game to be over is true. So, for example, if you're playing Sonic and you get hit and you want the uh, training to start over again, you can set done and then do while, while not done up here. That's, that's OpenAI stuff. Watch the, uh, any of the other tutorials on that for this. For this one, we're just going to do this. Uh, again, we don't really need them, but maybe why not? And we got to do a step, though. So every time this loops, we need to step forward in the emulator. Otherwise, it'll just be a single frame. Uh, and since we don't have anything set up for inputting actions, we're just going to do the built-in sample function, which will let us um, uh, randomly pick. So there you go. Pretty cool, right? I'm sure there's a way to do this, make it stretch to full screen and everything. I, I had, it's probably really simple. I just haven't figured it out yet. For now, this is this is good. Okay. So where are we in this timeline? I think. We're gonna stop that here, guys, and we'll come back tomorrow and uh, build the rest of the, uh, we'll, we'll build the joystick stuff, okay? Awesome, see you then.